Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at Mudblazer and just a little introduction to it and how we set it up in .NET 8. So it will be a Blazor web app that we're going to set it up in. And just to take a short look on what Mudblazer is, we will also go and take the default menu when we create a Blazor web app and make it to a Mudblazer menu instead. So go and open Visual Studio 2022 and just go and create a new project then go and open the blazer web app and say next and it really doesn't matter what we call the project just let that be or you can just go and rename it to whatever you want we can just go and say next then so we're going to use the .NET 8 framework, the long-term supported version. We will have no authentication type. The interactive render mode is going to be server and then the interactivity location. You could go and set it to global but I will just go and set it to per page. So if you have choose this, then there is just one configuration we need to do to actually make Mudblazer work inside our project. But if you click on global, it should just work without that extra configuration. So I'll just choose this per page slash component. So I can choose you the little trick on how to set up Mudblazer by using that. So let's go and say create. So now that we have our project, let's go and right click on the name of the app and let's go and manage NuGet packages. I'll then go to browse so that we can go and browse after the Mudblazer. So just type Mudblazer and then we're going to choose the first one here. So in this case, I have the stable version 6.16.0. And if you scroll down, you can see there is some dependencies and we do have a .NET 8. So it'll just be fine to install it like this. So we say install, say I accept. So now when that is installed, we will go over to our components and open the underscore imports.razor file just to add the Mudblazer package that we just installed. So you will just go and say using and then Mudblazer. The next thing we wanna do is to add the font and style references. So it will be a link inside our head section and we will go and find it inside this app.razor file. So just open this. And in here, we just wanna go and add these two lines of code. So the first line is just the funds from the Google API. And the second line here is the Mudblazers CSS, their own CSS style sheet that is just minimized here. So just like the CSS here, then Mudblazer also have a JS file. So like a script that we're going to use. And we actually just want to add it down here underneath the framework Blazor web JS. So it is just a script where we say underscore content, it's mudblazer, and it will find it as the file called mudblazer.min.js. So it's just a minified JavaScript script that mudblazer have also created. So we can go and use that. I will put a link in the description so you can just go and fetch these things. The next thing we need to do is to go to our program.cs file. So it is from in here that we're going to add some services to our builder. So basically just what services do we want to have on our website or what libraries can we go and use? So it's actually in here that we can go and add the Mudblazer service. So basically what we do is just to take our builder and go into services and say add mod services. And of course, the reason that we can do this is because we did go and install the NuGet package. So this actually just tell us that we actually want to use these services in the NuGet package. It did also automatically go and say using modblazer.services up here. So the next file we want to go to is inside our layout. It is our main layout.razor file. And our final goal in here is actually to make everything in here to modblazer components instead of these HTML tags. But just at the top here, we can go and add the providers to the things that we're going to use Mudblazer for. So the first provider is this Mud theme provider. And just to make Mudblazer work, we do need to have this. So it is pretty much required where the next two, the Mud dialog provider and the Mud snack bar provider is actually optional, but it is recommended from Mudblazer that we're also going to use these. So right now we could actually get rid of all this code so that we can replace it with some Mudblazer components. But I'll just go and open the application so you can see how it looks now. 
And it is, of course, the basic default page that we have provided by Blazor themselves. But what we are interesting to do is to actually go and make a hamburger menu icon that we can click. And then this whole menu will just go and collapse. And when we click on the icon again, it will just go and open again. And it's actually pretty simple to do it with Mod Blazor. So back in our code here, let's go and delete everything for now. So the first component here is just like some HTML tag. Actually, you have the opening tag here and you have the closing tag, but it's called a component. And this one is called a mod layout. And it's actually just to tell that we do now want to use mod blazer to make our layout. So it's like our main container for the whole view or the whole page. Then first of all, we want to go and say that we want to have some main content. And just to show you what this means is that if we go back to the website, you can see at the default Blazor app here, we have the menu over here. And then we actually have the main content on this whole page here. So it is inside this mod main content that we want to go and add our body. Just like we had it before with Blazor. We just want to say that the body now should go inside our mod main content. So if we just go and test this now, so we can see how this is looking, then you can see the only thing we have right now is the main content. We don't have any menu or any bar at the top. So it's actually all we have. So the next thing we can go and add is actually the mod app bar. And this is going to be our bar at the top of the page. So when you just do a mod app bar component here, you will automatically get it at the top of the page. Let's go and see how this is looking. And now you can see we have the app bar up here. So we do want to go and create a menu that we can go and collapse. And inside our app bar, we will go and make the icon that we can go and click to open the menu. And the menu part in Mod Blazor is called a Mod Draw. And it have a attribute here that is called Open that we can go and set to either true or false if we want to have it open or closed. So let's run it again to see how it looks. And now you can see we actually added it over here at the left side. So we can go and use this drawer as a menu. So first of all, let's go and add the icon to our app bar. And this is the app icon button. I've taken it directly from the Mud Blazer documentation. So it is basically to tell what icon that we want, do we want to display. And it is inside the icons and then the material, it's called filled and then it is a menu. So this is the path to the icon that we're going to use in Mod Blazor. And the color is going to be inherit and we set the edge to edge.start. And then actually one of the more important thing here is the on click because what should happen when we click on the icon and it will be a method that we're going to create that is called draw toggle that is going to toggle the menu down here or our mod drawer. So down at the bottom here, let's go and add the code section that we can go and create in a Blazor web app. And we do want to go and create a variable, which is a bool. So it's either true or false. And in this case, we call it drawer open. So let's go and take this variable name and let's put it instead of the true up here. Let's go and say the add sign and then go and say draw open. And then instead of just open, we will also go and say add sign and then say we should bind open so that we're going to bind to this variable and always listen to what the value is. And actually the on click up here to make it a little bit easier to read, I think we can actually just go and say that we want to call the draw toggle. Then it should know that it is this method. But basically what the draw toggle method down here is going to do is it return void. So it really doesn't return anything. It will just go and reverse the value of the underscore draw open here. Or it will actually make, make it the opposite of what it already is when you click on it. So the next thing we can go and do is inside our mod drawer here, we can go and add the nav menu just like this. Just say nav menu. And it will actually go and look inside this nav menu dot race file over here. So that is the component that we're going to insert here. And as you will see in just a moment, then what is already in there was from the Blazor app, the default Blazor app. And 
if we look at it right here, you can see that it actually doesn't fit the design here of what Mud Blazer would have it to look like. So we just want to go in and also make these to some Mud Blazer components instead of instead of all this code that it is right now. And thanks to Mud Blazer, this will go and be a much more simple. Because what we want to do in here is to actually just add a Mud Nav menu component, and we also need to close it off like this. And then inside, we actually just want to go and put a link to every page that we have. We have a counter page, we have our home page, and we have the weather page. So for every line we want to have in our menu, or every link, we put a mod nav link, and then say href in this case, because it will just go to the home page or the front page, because this is going to be the home link or the home bottom that we have in our menu. And we want to match it with this nav link match and say dot all and I do believe we say all because this is going to be the front page because we can go and copy and paste this and then the next thing we want to have is the prefix and then we want to go and say that this should be the counter and let's put it in here also in the URL and let's go and remove all the code that we had before and let's see how this is going to look so as you can see now it look much better we have the home button and we have the counter button, which is actually working. But the final thing I want to go and look at is this menu icon, because right now it's still not working. However, if you choose that you want to have a global interactivity location, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, when we created the Blazor project, if you have a global, then it should work. But if you have the per page, then we need to do one configuration and it is just one simple thing that we need to do but of course you have to know it before you can do it so let's just go and close the application and let's go to the app.razor file here and then inside this routes inside our body we do want to go and say that the render mode should be equal to interactive server and that should really do the trick so let's go and test it again so now we can see that our menu button here is also working so with all the mod blazer components it's pretty simple to create all this and maybe you don't want the menu to be open when you start the application then you would of course just go and set the drawer open here to false instead so that when the application is opening up for the first time it will be false just like this and then you click it and you open it so i think that's it for this introduction tutorial on mudblazer inside dotnet 8 and inside a blazer web app so thank you for watching and go and have a nice day bye